2001 Yamaha FJR 1300. It's a four cylinder inline Yamaha engine. It's really a touring bike. It's a five speed hydraulic clutch, automatic choke, Yamaha panniers fitted. <coughs> We're going to be fitting some new tyres to it as well. I uh, took it out on higher speed handling and because of the tyres it's not as good as it could be. But I do know that these bikes handle so that's not in question. So this is uh, currently up in Beachdale for 3995. I looked on Bike Trader and there's a couple of others at the same sort of price but one's got 42,000 miles on it and one's got 65,000 miles on it. Let's climb on. This particular model, oh it's got the Meekneeks on it, it's got 22,600 miles so for these it's absolutely nothing. Let's start it up. The engine's silent on it, it's absolutely beautiful. It's got electric, uh, electrically heated grips on it. Okay, you ready? Ready for this? Ready? Screen goes up. Screen goes down. Hey, hey. <laughs> Let's go and take it for a bit of a play. See what the slow speed car park balance is like. Okay, my feet are up. Got a lovely balance. Yeah, sweet. So it's going to be nice for slow speed in traffic. The clutch is very smooth. The back brake's not overly powerful, but that just might be because of this particular bike. It's got that Yamaha gearbox that. Um, when the engine's cold it does clunk into gear a little bit. It's got a slightly snicky gearbox on it which is a, a Yamaha trait really. Um, bearing in mind that this bike is actually a shaft drive not a chain drive it's a bit unusual. The throttle on this one is ever so slightly stiff but that's just because of this bike. Uh, it's not been in our workshops for a full service yet. So we're going to be uh, doing things like that. This is why we test ride them. As I say, the clutch is smooth. The engine's lovely on it. Power wise. Yeah, it's got a lovely pull to it. Let's pop that electric screen up, see if it protects us from the wind. Okay, there's still quite a bit of buffeting on that screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide to go for the screen down option. So what is there to say about it? The brakes are okay, they do the job. Handling wise, I can feel it's resisting me a little bit, but that's because the tyres have been squared off. The last guy used it as a bit of a commuter, but it'll have a brand new pair of tyres on and I've got no doubt whatsoever that this is gonna handle beautifully. The dash is really nice and easy to read. Um, I stuck some fuel in it before I went out and it's clearly showing me I've got four bars of fuel, which is uh, nice. Right, fuel injection mapping on this. I'll just bring it down. It's what I'd expect fuel injection mapping to be. If I'm being really picky, you can just feel it ever so slightly. But nowhere near as bad as that BMW GS was. So I'd be happy with this actually. Comfort wise, it's really nice. The bars are in a nice position. The weight's not too much on your wrists or on your bum. It's a nice A shape. So uh, it is very, very comfortable. This particular model comes with some factory Yamaha panniers. Um, I don't know whether it was an option when it was new, but I'd imagine for 16 grand, I would expect a butler to deliver it for me. But also bear in mind now that this bike is as sweet as a nut. It's only done 22,000 miles and it's a 4,000 pound Tourer. So you could take this around Europe and it wouldn't even be out of breath. All the switch gears in the right place. Um, not sure what gear I'm in, but I, I have found the only problem that I've got is I'm used to um, some six speed bikes, even though my pan has only got five. On this bike, because it revs so low, when you get into fifth gear, you're always trying to find a sixth. And that's because the engine pulls so cleanly. I mean, I'm doing 
1500 revs there from tick over and open it up and it just pulls like it's on a bungee cord i know i've used that before on the the zr 1100 review but it really does the engine's lovely on it I can feel those heater grips coming through now. Got the heater gloves on one, and I've got the heated grips on 75%, and that's just keeping my hands nice and warm. I think it's about three degrees out there at the moment. Mirrors, they're good. You can see a little bit of your arms, but you can also see quite a bit of the road that you need to see. A lot of these mirrors, if you're not careful, just, just basically show your elbows, and you don't need that but these do show a lot of the road behind and also there's no vibration on the mirrors whatsoever there's no vibration through the foot pegs there's no vibration through the handlebars it's quite an easy bike to ride um, some of these newer 600s and things tend to be quite sharp okay I'll keep the revs quite high actually I mean I'm at 3,000 now and I can hardly feel anything through the handlebars I'm gonna stay in this gear I think I might be in around second or third gear with these modern bikes having gear position indicators it's quite nice because you can just look at what gear you're in even though some people including myself would say well it doesn't really matter that much still keeping the revs there tiny little bit of vibration through the seat but Yamaha engines do tend to be a little bit buzzy anyway, my phaser was. That gearbox is actually quite sweet when you're moving. It's slicker than my phaser was, a lot slicker. There was absolutely no noises or clunking or banging when I was changing up the gears. Let's have a look at the gear changing, going to block change. Fifth, fourth, third, second first well, that's actually quite sweet that's definitely a better gearbox than my phaser it's also fitted with hazards that's got a really nice meaty tone to it as well but at higher speed you do get a little bit of buffet in it, it might benefit from something like the laminar lip or a, a slightly bigger screen because when it's down you're getting full wind blast and when it's all the way up with my height you tend to be getting buffeting exactly where you don't want it so i think i'd rather have the full wind blast than a turbulence so for now i'm just keeping the visor or the screen down high speed stability is good i've uh, done 70 plus vat on an off-road area in controlled conditions and it's sweet so conclusion on this I know it's only a brief review again but as a conclusion it's it's nice a four thousand pounds will get you a super ballistic Tora very comfortable I can imagine it's also pretty good for passengers as well and they can sit there on a nice wide flat seat it's only when the seats get domed in the middle it starts to become uncomfortable for us men because it presses on our inner bits. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And I'm not just saying this because I'm selling it, because if I didn't like the bike, I wouldn't do this upload until after I'd sold it, because it is only my opinion at the end of the day. Like the BMW GS, I didn't like it. It wasn't my type of bike, but a lot of people do. So if you wanted to get yourself something like this, it's certainly worth looking at.